Yeah, I know what it feels like. Look at me. I've been studying English for ages. I watch movies and videos in English every single day. And yes, I also write content in English for this channel and for my clients in the US and Canada. Still, I cannot record a single video of me speaking English, but how so? Well, let's look into it. I think I might have cracked the code. Hello, language and culture enthusiasts. Welcome or welcome back to Multicultural Lingo. Today, we are going to dive into a topic that I really can relate to. Why do many of us get to the point where we can understand a language perfectly but can't speak it? So, before we start, here's a little bit about me. I'm Italian and in my life I've studied a lot of languages. I've started with English and French at school, then Russian, and now I'm continuing with Chinese, Japanese, and Korean. I can proudly say that I'm very fluent in Russian. Of course, I do have an accent, but I can speak and write just like native speakers do. I may also be fluent in English, wasn't that for the fact that I cannot speak it? Whenever I try, my brain literally shuts down and so does my mouth. In this video, I'd like to explore this, let's call it, phenomenon. I want to use my story of successfully learning and speaking Russian to help you do better than me with whatever language you are studying. Let's jump right in. Now I'd like to start with the fact that understanding and speaking a language are two distinct skills that learners can develop through active and passive studying. As the University of Pittsburgh writes, Cognitive science research has shown us that active studying is a method or strategy where the student cognitively engages and interacts with the material they are learning. With that reference, we identify passive studying as consuming information through merely reading or listening, whereas active studying is the processing of information by engaging in the content through discussion, analysis, synthesis, problem solving, reflection, questioning, and practice. So basically, Passive studying means acquiring a language, while active studying is when you put it to use, engaging with it on a deeper level. And guess what? Active studying is harder and so you need more of that. If you look at The Learning Pyramid by Edgar Dale, you can clearly see that reading leads to a 10% retention, watching to a 20% retention, but practicing has a 75% retention outcome. Now think about the way you study the language you want to learn. Whether it's at school, at home, or in courses, do you do active or passive study? As far as I'm concerned, I mostly do passive study. Why? Because is the only study you can do when you're alone at home or when you attend a class with other 10 students where there's simply not enough time for anyone to speak. The only time I did active studying was when I studied Russian in Moscow and after class, I had to speak with my foreign friends using the words and phrases I just had learned. And trust me when I say it paid off. So one thing we could all do to shift from passive to active studying is to make friends that speak the language we are learning. If you don't have any around, try finding them using the app Tandem. If you don't have time to make friends, at least book some conversation hours with a native tutor on Italki. In my description, you can find a link and my promo code to get $5 off your first lesson. The second reason why you and I cannot speak a language we perfectly understand is that our mouth is not physically trained to do so. Just like you cannot run a marathon if you don't train all year running around your neighborhood. Beatrice Lillian Honickman, a phonetician of South African origin who taught at SOAS University of London and the University of Leeds, said that people should develop a gear for every language they speak. Every language has an articulatory setting that is the default position of a speaker's organs of articulation when ready to speak. Different languages each have their own basis of articulation, which means that native speakers will share a certain position of tongue, lips, jaw, and possibly even uvula or larynx when preparing to speak. This means that to speak fluently another language, we have to train our brain but also our mouth and our throat. And the only way to do so is by practicing the sounds of the language we learn, mimicking native speakers. Just as Chinese learners do when we practice tones. I have an Italian articulatory setting or gear, and it was easier for me to adapt it to the Russian language because many sounds are honestly quite similar. However, English phonetics is nothing like the Italian one and after years of studying, I still cannot pronounce such vowel sounds as in world or say the verb no without forcing myself to get rid of the K at the beginning. And don't even get me started on the R sound and the nasal vowels in French. One mistake I now realize I did was that I always focused more on grammar, vocabulary, and listening. Yes, I was lazy, but what's the point in knowing so many words and structures if you cannot use them actively when speaking? 
So please practice speaking a new language from the very beginning. Pay attention to where your tongue, lips, and jaw naturally rest. Try to mimic the native speakers not just in their words, but also in their articulatory setting. It may feel strange at first, but it's the only way to train your mouth. Mastering the articulatory setting of a language can be a game changer. But sometimes there's one last hurdle to overcome. The third reason why we cannot speak a language we understand, in my opinion, is our self-preservation instinct. Yes, we don't want people to make fun of us and we prefer to stay silent. I think this is also why studying a language in the country where it's spoken is much more effective than doing it in our country. When you're immersed in a linguistic environment, you simply cannot do without speaking the language. You are obliged to leave your comfort zone. And yes, usually it's right where the magic happens. Yes, because making mistakes and receiving feedback from other people is fundamental to learning a language and some studies confirm that. For example, researchers from Michigan State University did some testing and divided a pool of students into two groups, growth-minded individuals and fixed-minded individuals. The first group believed that intelligence can develop through effort and think of mistakes as learning opportunities. The second group believed that intelligence cannot be changed and if you make mistakes you simply lack ability. Then the researchers had them complete some tasks. When the participants with a growth mindset made mistakes, the researchers found brain activity connected to awareness of and attention to those mistakes. These individuals also showed more accuracy in the task after making errors, suggesting that they learned from them. So, what does it mean? Well, first, if you pay attention to your mistakes, you can learn from them and reduce your chances of making more. Second, you and I should approach the challenges of speaking a language with the right attitude. So, why can we understand a language but not speak it? Well, we've talked about the difference between active and passive studying. We've learned that active engagement takes more effort than passive studying, but it's actually more important. We've also highlighted the importance of regular practice and understanding the articulatory setting, how the position of your speech organs can impact your language skills, and we have to train our mouth and throat to achieve results. And let's not forget about overcoming fear. I'm fluent in Russian because I've practiced it actively from the very beginning and because I was forced to speak it every day when I used to live in Moscow. Unfortunately, I've never had an English-speaking friend and I've never developed a habit in speaking it. My one-week trips to London and Scotland didn't make any difference. And that's it for today. Please share with me your language learning journey in the comments and add some tips if you know any. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more language and culture content. Now turn off YouTube and go practice your speaking.